In the United States, newborns are routinely screened for a variety of metabolic and genetic defects by analysis of blood collected on a special filter paper. Screening newborns is important for the early detection, diagnosis, and treatment of certain genetic, metabolic, and infectious diseases. Newborn screening requirements vary depending on the state in which the newborn resides, so phlebotomists should be familiar with their applicable state's requirements. When performing a capillary blood collection for newborn screening specimens, the heel of the neonate is the most frequently used site. The following equipment is necessary for newborn screening blood collection. Sterile, automatic, disposable pediatric safety skin puncture devices in different manufacturers' incision depths. For premature neonates, use an incision depth of 0.65 to 0.85 millimeters. For larger infants, use a puncture depth of 1 millimeter. Newborn screening cards are kept in the hospital laboratory or the nursery. Remember not to use screening cards if they're beyond the expiration date on the filter paper. Standard supplies include 70% isopropyl alcohol swabs, sterile 2-inch by 2-inch gauze sponges, puncture-resistant sharps container, disposable gloves, non-latex if the child is allergic, a towel or washcloth to warm heel if necessary, marking pen and laboratory requisition slips. Begin the procedure by identifying the infant according to your facility's procedures. You may then fill out the information on the newborn screening card. Warm the puncture site according to your facility's procedures. Wash or sanitize your hands and don gloves. If required, don a mask and gown. To prevent contamination of the sample, do not touch any part of the filter paper circles with your hands or gloves before, during, or after collection. Do not allow the filter paper to come in contact with substances such as alcohol, formula, water, powder, antiseptic solutions, or lotion. Note that circles are printed on the filter paper portion of the card. Perform the skin puncture according to procedure and wipe away the first drop with a sterile gauze. Allow another large blood drop to form. Lightly touch the printed side of the filter paper with the blood drop and fill each printed circle. Allow the blood to soak through and completely fill the circle with a single application to the large blood drop. If the circle does not fill entirely, wipe the heel. Express another, larger drop to a different circle. Remember, do not add a second drop of blood to a previously used circle. Also keep in mind, the filter paper must not touch the skin puncture site and only one side of the filter paper should be used. Once the circles are filled, dry the blood spots on a clean, dry, flat, non-absorbent surface for a minimum of four hours. Remember, direct application of blood from the heel to the card is the technique of choice. Most newborn screening laboratories will not accept blood spots collected by a capillary tube since the testing may not be accurate. When the collection is complete, press the puncture site with a clean sterile gauze until the bleeding stops completely. Elevate the heel slightly above the body and assure that bleeding has stopped. Check the infant's heel puncture site for late bleeding or inflammation. Dispose of the used skin puncture devices in a sharps container with a biohazard label. Be sure to check the infant's bed for any equipment or trash left behind. Discard blood-soaked gauze sponges, grossly contaminated items, and gowns or gloves used in isolation rooms into biohazardous waste containers. Dispose of gowns and gloves that are not from isolation rooms in the regular trash. Remember to wash or sanitize your hands after removing gloves. Correctly complete all the information on the screening card so that follow-up can be done if the results are abnormal. The screening card should be placed in an appropriate envelope and sent to the specified testing laboratory within 24 hours. Remember, it is important to be cautious and careful in the blood collection and transfer to the filter paper for the newborn screening. Many interferences can result due to poor blood collection techniques. The most common errors include not properly drying the blood specimen before mailing it to the lab, not completely filling the paper circles, not saturating the circles with blood, or not filling all the circles, applying blood to both sides of filter paper, applying an excessive amount of blood, squeezing or milking the heel stick resulting in tissue-diluted specimens. 
Be careful not to contaminate the filter paper circles before or after blood collection with substances such as hand lotion, powder, alcohol, or antiseptic hand solution. Touching the circled areas with gloved or ungloved hands will also contaminate the specimen. Finally, a specimen can be compromised by not wiping the alcohol off the site before the puncture is made or not allowing the site to air dry after the site is cleaned with the alcohol.